I'm like that, that's hypoadrenia. That's somebody whose adrenal glands are pretty shot, you know. Okay. Hey, we could go to like four separate lectures here. You guys have an extra six hours right now? No. Oh. Sure. Okay. Um, Bringing the pizza. <laughs> yes, it's, it's on us. Um, all right. So, so there's a hormone called pregnenolone, and sometimes when people run out of their adrenal hormone, the other adrenal hormones, which are cortisol, and uh, um, then they end up having what's called a pregnenolone steal, so they can't even get any of the main stress and longevity hormones from the adrenal cortex, which allows them to go into a sleeping state, which is breaking down phenylalanine, basically, and then making serotonin and melatonin. When they cannot do that because they've been under too much chronic stress, they just steal from the other side of the adrenal gland, which is epinephrine and norepinephrine. So basically they're lying there in bed as kind of like wide awake, ready to like, you know, run from a tiger or fight a bear or something like that. Um, it would only be a grizzly bear, not the black bears. You guys know the grizzly bears are kind of crazy and there's not a lot of them. The black bears, they scare easily. <coughs> if you didn't know that, then you've learned something new today in addition to all the stuff about the thyroid. Okay, the thyroid regulates body temperature, so cold hands and feet is due to hypothyroidism. Or another kind of thyroid, it could be hyperthyroidism as well. <coughs> all right. And sometimes the, the skin, painful, cracked, bleeding heels, or just somebody who's having a lot of trouble with their heels, that could be a thyroid symptom as well, due to not enough circulation going to the extremities. Okay, or, um, let's keep going here. Or somebody who has like a lot of calluses on their hands, maybe they do do some manual work, but they're not doing it all the time, that's a thyroid symptom, especially if it's bad and it's not going away. Okay, all right. Moodiness, um, definitely. I mean, just think about it. If they're all going together, you know, I'm constipated, I'm having trouble with um, thinking clearly, we haven't been over that yet, I'm having uh, mood imbalances, I'm having painful, painful cracked, bleeding heels or palms, I'm having all kinds of difficulty with my, my voice, let's say. Some, a couple people said something about a stuffy voice or trouble with thinking. Uh, swallowing or a sore throat, those are all thyroid type symptoms. Uh, all right, panic attacks, ADD, ADHD, heart palpitations, being paranoid or suspicious, that's definitely a, a thyroid symptom, that one there. Um, it's so, so rampant that it's like a part of our music industry, they have that in a lot of songs, There's things about being paranoid and suspicious. I would it's like sort of some rap there's some popular song, some guys saying something like, I would like I would like die for love. I would do this for love. It's like, oh my god, are you crazy? It's like just get healthy, you know, don't do all those things for love. Just stop doing the, the thyroid thing, get healthy, get your heart and thyroid healthy. You don't have to do anything but love your lover and you'll be fine, you know. You don't have to die for love. You don't have to, you know, shut up, you know, explode a grenade for love or anything like that. Okay. Um all right, these are thyroid symptoms. Can you, um, Carol, could you help Yvette just pass out that brochure, turquoise? Oh, Yvette can do it? Oh, Yvette thinks she can do it. She can do it on her own, I guess. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> However you guys want to work it out, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want me to help pass them out, I'm here as well. Here's some more thyroid symptoms. I got things to do, places to go, people to see. I mean, check me out, guys. Do I not seem like I have things happening? Oh, boy. Uh, so this is a 50-year-old model, right? What do we got? We've got these things here. Hopefully I'm not going to shoot a laser in the one. Okay, these are, I guess, this is what, um, by, by Yeah. Yeah, this is what you were saying you were, you were doing. But really, there's an infinite number of things we can do to get help with the thyroid. We can change, you know, we can do mind-body visualization, we can do energy medicine, we can use homeopathy, there's different kinds of herbs, there's gemotherapy, there's lithotherapy, there's all kinds of cranial sacral therapy, there's sacral occipital technique, there's upledger's work, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. There's different doctors came up with different techniques, there's neuroemotional techniques, there's total body modification, 
I'm a professional applied kinesiologist. We actually use all those techniques in our office. There's flower essences. I'm just handing that out because it has all those symptoms from the last one. Not all of them, but it just gives you a chance to follow along with some of the symptoms so I don't have to stay on the slide for too long. That's good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for your support, Matt. Okay. So, I don't know about you, but the idea of being on a medication my whole life doesn't, doesn't work for me. I don't like that idea. I don't like the idea of having to take uh, something that's radioactive. That just doesn't sound good. You know, radioactive things kill living tissue in humans and other animals, especially mammals. The idea of removing a really important organ or gland that I need that affects every cell in my body, that doesn't seem like a good idea. This whole concept is 50 years old. So let's try to get, get, get to some stuff here. So the thyroid glands in the neck, it's above the larynx, um, which is the voice box, basically, and it's just below the thyroid cartilage. And um, there's blood capillaries there, there that'll take up and deliver the hormone throughout the body. The hormone that's delivered throughout the body is called thyroglobulin. But again, one of the main thyroid symptoms is poor circulation, so if there's already trouble with the circulation, those blood capillaries won't be able to do what they're supposed to do, so it could be like a negative feedback loop for us. You know, it's gonna be hard to treat a problem that's there, the problem that's there is creating the problem that's there. That didn't really, that sound weird, but does that make sense? You know what you mean. If there's poor circulation as one of the thyroid symptoms, but you're dependent upon circulation to get the thyroid hormone to the whole, out to the cells throughout the body, that could be a big problem. Um, so we'll talk about why that's a problem in a minute. Um, it's a little bit more. There's two kinds of thyroid cells. There's T4, which is the inactive thyroid hormone, and then there's T3, which is the active thyroid hormone. Okay. There's the follicular cells that make the T3, and then there's the parafollicular uh, and T4, actually, and then there's the parafollicular cells that make calcitonin. Calcitonin. Anyone hear about, you know, bone thinning or bone loss being on the rise? Osteoporosis, osteopenia. Right. It's on the rise. Why? Because we're living longer. Um, I could never argue with truth, so I'm not going to do that. I'm so tempted, but I will not do that. That's true, we're living longer, so anything happens when you live longer. But if we have a thyroid epidemic, and the thyroid is what allows for healthy bones, then it probably has something to do with the epidemic that's not being addressed. And yeah, there is a lot of stuff now on TV and the magazines and in social media and all this kind of stuff about the thyroid that wasn't being discussed um, in the past, but it's, it's not to the degree that it could be. It's not like, hey, you know, today is Monday, and the next six days of the week we'll be talking about how to help you with your thyroid, and it's on channel, you know, one of the main channels. They're not really doing that so much. Just Oprah's really annoyed because she hasn't gone over her thyroid condition, I guess. Um, she's one of the people, by the way. Oprah, oh. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, um, and the lady, Missy Elliott, and there's others, okay. So that's, it's really not, I mean, I'm not trying to oversimplify, even though it sounds like it, but thyroid dis dysfunction and adrenal dysfunction, or hypoadrenia and hypothyroidism, that is what leads to bone loss. So sometimes people have, you know, abused their bodies when they've done like too many triathlons and too many marathons and that kind of thing. They've worn down their bones a little bit, but really, that's also wearing down their adrenal glands and their thyroid. So it is indeed, you know, the, the bone loss is indeed a thyroid symptom. Um, that is the, the hormone that puts the calcium into the bone. Um, vitamin D helps with the process as well. Okay, so pitfall number two, insufficient protein consumption or poor protein metabolism, digestion, and absorption or utilization. Why? Because that's the thyroid hormone there that's delivering the thyroid through the body and it's made of protein. So if the thyroid hormone is made of protein and you're not eating enough protein, then um, yeah, you're in trouble, right? I was thinking another way to put it, but probably not good, yeah. Uh, okay, so where could the problem be with the thyroid? Well, you make the thyroid releasing hormone and the hypothalamus, think of the hypothalamus as the composer of the music. A good profession, one that I've never been able to look into a whole lot, but I think that would be cool. You just, you're like Beethoven. You just sit there and compose music all day. So that's what the hypothalamus does. 
or it could be a problem with the pituitary, the thyroid stimulating hormone. That's where the conductor of the orchestra is. Another good profession. <coughs> the idea. Oh, another sneeze, please. Oh, another sneeze. Okay, I mean, I like that conducting. I mean, I've only seen a few, a few orchestras in my time. I used to play the Shouldn't that be symphony. Should that be GSH instead of GRH? No, it should not. Because the hypothalamus is the composer, and it makes the thyroid releasing hormone, oh, okay. which then signals the pituitary to make its hormone, the thyroid stimulating hormone, which then signals the thyroid to make its hormone, okay. which is T4. But we can't use T4. Damn. We're screwed. <laughs> you can't, T4 is not even active thyroid hormone. T3 is, but most of the thyroid hormone is T4. So where do you think we get the, the, T, the rest of the T3 that we need? If we need T3 and we only make about 7 or 8 or 10 percent of it, and we need about 90 percent, where do we get the rest of the T3? The From the bones? I'm uh, that's a good guess. No, that's not right, but it's a good guess. I mean, I like, I, I like that the participation is important. You got an A for participation. Any other guesses? From the T4. You get it from the T4. That's right, who said that? Oh, good guess, good guess. And what's your name again? Rita. Rita. Uh, we're not done with the contest yet. Just Rita's in the lead, but we're, we have <laughs> competition from others. Okay. Don't forget, people, if you have a question, let us know and we'll, we'll write it down. Okay, so we're going to go over that now. Ah, there we go. So thyroid metabolism. T3, think of it as like high octane gasoline for your body. And then, oh, by the way, the, so the thyroid would be like one of the players, right? Like a trombone or maybe a, um, not like a violin or something like that. Whereas the, the pituitary is the conductor. And there's all these other players like the adrenal glands, you know, the flute and all that kind of thing. So we convert most of the T3 that we need from T4. 93% of the hormone is T, T4. Not exactly 93%, but just say, you know, um, let's just say, you know, 85 to 95%, something like that. So 60% of the T4 is converted to T3 in the liver. Um, in the liver, 20% is converted in peripheral tissues throughout the body. Uh, about 20%, unfortunately, is really hard to use. And about 20% is converted from T4 to T3 through the use of T3 sulfate and T3 acetate in the gut. The gut meaning the small intestine and large intestine, mainly. Okay, and then we have another 7% of active T3 that we can and be used. So hopefully you're all following that. Okay, I like, I like you for your participation. Yeah? That's, I mean, that's that, an issue. I was, that's an issue that I've been having because I've, my, my T3 has been low. Uh -huh. um, do you find that it's primarily an issue in the liver or an issue in the gut? Or? I do. Okay. Is it both or which one? Yeah, it's both. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But again, the highest good is to find the cause. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. We treat people specifically, so we don't just do like a generalized approach. Each person we do the try to help vibrational biodynamic assessment to determine what's causing their imbalance, you know, what's causing their hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. 